Are you a noob and want to make fat cash and learn rates, but you don't want to watch two hours of videos? Well, you've come to the right place. I'll show you everything you need to get started in just 16 minutes. To get to raids, just rub your Xerix talisman to Xerix honor or walk all the way through the swamp. I recommend having 85 plus combat stats, 78 herblore is a must if you want to be helpful, and at least one party member must have 90 herblore to make the overload plus. High agility, woodcutting, mining levels are also very useful in raids. This is the gear we will be using. I recommend using full void to keep the amount of switches to a minimum. Use the berserker ring and primordial or dragon boots if you're not going to bring boot or ring switches because it gives you some extra max hits. To start out you might even want to drop the cape switch and stick to the assembler for two extra brews. Main weapon for melee is the dragon hunter lance. If you can't afford this bring a tentacle whip. And we will be using a dragon warhammer or a bandos godsword for its special attack. The main weapon for range is the blowpipe but also bring a dragon hunter crossbow with ruby dragon bolts E for shamans and skeletal mystics. If you can't afford the dragon hunter crossbow Crossbow, just bring the regular dragon crossbow. The main weapon for mage is the sanguinesti staff and if you can't afford this just bring in a toxic trident. I put my mage switch at the bottom because we won't need it until Ulm and above that I place my specialty items. These are only required to bring in certain rooms but I bring them with me on every raid because those rooms are so common. As I said before the crossbow is for shamans and skeletal mystics to get some extra long range. The self amulet is for skeletal mystics, which count as undead monsters, and the dragon pick is for guardians. The antidote is used as protection against shamans. Don't worry about taking all this information in now, I'll come back to it later when we go over the different rooms. We will also bring a rune pouch filled with water strike spells. Only one person in the party needs to bring this, but I recommend you bring it just in case all your other party members forgot. For supplies, I bring one range and one super combat potion, three super restores, a stamina potion and an angler fish. I fill the rest of my inventory with Ceradamon brews. I bring the angler fish so I can eat it when full HP to switch to my two handed weapons. If you want, you can swap out the angler fish for an extra brew. To start a raid, join a clan channel. And make sure if you're raiding with friends, you give one of your friends the rank of general. That way if you get disconnected, the raid isn't disbanded and you can rejoin when reconnected. Click on the recruiting board and click make party. Then run downstairs. Make sure you have the chamber of Xerix rune light plugin enabled. That way you can see what rooms are in the raid. Keep repeating until you have a raid with all easy bosses. Let's talk about these rooms now. So we won't be learning all the rooms as some are a massive pain in the ass. The green rooms are easy, yellow is medium and the red ones are the hardest rooms. Most parties don't do a raid with any of the hardest rooms, so there's no point in learning them, definitely not as a beginner. There are also four puzzle rooms, uh, these are all quite easy, but tightrope and crabs are more favorable than thieving and ice demon, because those get more points per hour. Now, let's get into a raid and show you these boss fights. PS, raiding with a three man party is a lot easier, so I would recommend starting with that and not going at it by yourself, completely solo. Mutadile. Enter the room with protect from range and your blowpipe, blowpipe him down and don't let him melee you. Occasionally he will eat from the tree to regain health. After you kill him, his mother will come after you, kill her too. Usually this spot is pretty safe but not always. If you get too close to Mutadal you might want to switch to protect from melee so you don't get one shot. The Mutadal always drops two overloads. Guardians. Put your pickaxe on smash, drink a stamina, hit and run until they're dead. Guardians drop herb seeds. Shamans. Protect from range and drink your antidote plus plus. Range them down with your crossbow. Try to hug the walls to not make them jump. When he throws the booger splat, run away. Keep your distance so you have time to react. He summons some suicidal purple children who will explode after a short delay. Don't stand next to them. Skeletal mystics. Put on your salve amulet, protect from mage and hit them with your crossbow. Blowpipe is more DPS but has less range, making it more likely to aggro all of the skeletons at once, which is not good. Skeletons also drop herb seeds. Tecton. Stand as far away from the anvil as possible. One person runs out to take his aggro and runs back to the other players. You must tank the first hit. Dump all of your dragon warhammer specs and pray to RNG Jesus that you get some that hit. Try to attack him like this while moving counterclockwise around him. Use a crush weapon like an elder mole because the dragon hunter lance on crush is not very effective. After a while he will go to the anvil where he will regenerate some HP and defense. Keep walking to avoid taking damage from the meteorites. 
This room is very risky and dependent on your special attacks. I would only recommend doing this room in bigger teams so you have more chances to hit your specs. If you hit zero specs you might as well leave in my opinion because it would be so fucking annoying to kill him. Tecton always drops two overload potions. Now let's go over the four puzzle rooms. There will be two puzzle rooms in each raid. Tightrope. Equip your blowpipe, protect from magic, kill mages. Protect from range, kill rangers. If you get low, you can stand behind this plant to not get hit. After you kill everything, cross the rope to pick up the crystal and open the door. Crabs. Protect from melee. You have to make these four colored crystals white. You can do that by letting the white orb of light bounce off of a colored crab, changing its direction and color. For example, if you hit the crab with melee, the crab will turn red. If the white orb of light hits that crab, the orb will also turn red. Make it hit the blue crystal to turn the crystal white. Repeat this until all four crystals are white. The colors you need the crab or orb to be to turn the crystals white are on screen now. White, not recently attacked, kills black. Blue, mage, kills yellow. Red, melee, kills blue. And green, range, kills purple. You can right click these crabs to smash them in place with a hammer. There's a hammer spawn right at the entrance. Ice demon. Chop a bunch of kindling and light the braziers to melt him down. When he spawns, dragon warhammer him and finish him off with range. Run in 3x3 three three squares and blowpipe him down. Hit run, hit run, hit run. Pray range so he doesn't use his AoE attack and fucks your teammates over. Fire spells are super effective here, but I can't be bothered to bring that into the raid with me. Thieving. Drop your pots, open the chests and collect grubs. Once you have a full inventory, dump them all at the scavenger. Repeat until the scavenger is full and moves out of the way. Pick up your pots. Preparation Before Ulm, you have a preparation room. Plant some seeds and run some vials of water from the gourd tree. You have three types of herbs, Buchu, Golpar and Noxifer. You also need to get secondaries for your potion. These can be gathered by killing scavengers. For every player, you will need about 2 Sicily, 6 mushroom and 20 juice. These scavengers also draw planks to make the storage chest width. You can use the dragon warhammer to construct this, or you can get a hammer drop from the scavengers. Noxifer and Golpar are used to make overloads, requiring 90 herb lore. Make the super combat ranged and mage pots with 3 Golpars plus 1 Sicily, 1 juice and 1 mushroom. Combine those 3 pots into the overload with the Noxifer herb. Buchu is used to make super restores, brews and prayer enhances. We will be needing a lot of Buchu herbs. Buchu plus Sicily makes prayer enhance. This potion regenerates prayer over time. Buchu plus mushroom makes revitalization potions. These are just super restores. And Buchu plus and darkened juice makes Xerix 8. These are ceratum and bruise. If you didn't get any seeds or forgot to pick them up, you can rake the patch at the entrance to Ulm to find some seeds. This is what your inventory should look like before heading to fight Ulm. I put my range gear at the bottom because you'll only need it in the last phase. You don't need your pickaxe, salve, crossbow. Don't forget to bring your rune pouch because this is where it'll come in handy. Make a pile of a brew and a restore. Equip your melee gear because everyone will start off with the dragon warhammer spec and fill your inventory like this. One overload, one prayer enhance, four restores and the rest brews. Touch the energy well to regen your run energy and sip your overload. Brew restore up to full HP and drop your half empty pots to make room for those full pots on the floor. Ulm, the final fight. Before I start to explain, here are some basics. Ulm has a head and two hands. His left hand is weak to melee and I will refer to this hand as melee hand. His right hand is weak to magic, I will refer to this hand as magic hand. His head is weak to ranged. Ulm can look in three directions, left, center and right. He will generally look at the side with the most players on it. He only attacks in the direction he is looking. Because of that, players will divide the map in three sections, so not everyone takes damage. On the left side, his mage hand, are the majors. In the center will be the runners, and on the right side, his melee hand, will be the meleeers. There should be an equal number of mages and meleeers so that the runners can keep tipping the balance from left to right, making Ulm have to turn his head all the time. Ulm hits with ranged and magic attacks. You can somewhat predict what attack he will use, because he's most likely to keep using the same attack style. For example, you start off praying mage, but he hits you with range. His next attack is most likely to be a ranged attack, so switch to protect from range. Before you enter the boss room, the team will be divided in three roles. 
Mages, Meleers and Runners. Easiest role is Mage, then Runner, then Melee. I'll go over what every role does in this fight. Mages. Hit one Warhammer spec on Melee hand and run to the Mage hand side. Put on your Mage gear and hit the Mage hand until it's dead. Then go help out with Melee hand. Runners. Hit one Warhammer spec on Melee hand and run to the middle. Equip your mage gear and hit the mage hand until it's dead. In between every one of Ulm's basic attacks, you will switch sides in the center to tip the player count balance in the room. When his mage hand is dead, go help out with the melee hand. Melee. Hit one warhammer spec on the melee hand and stay on the melee hand side. Keep hitting the melee hand. After a while, this hand will be crippled and you won't be able to damage it for a while. During that downtime, you want to switch to your mage gear and attack the mage hand from the melee side. This will require you to use long range on your trident. When the melee hand isn't crippled anymore, switch back to the melee gear and hit his melee hand. Keep repeating these switches until both hands are dead. That's the first phase done. You killed both hands once. Before you start the next phase, there will be this intermission with falling crystals coming from the ceiling. Stay two tiles away from the shadows these cast on the ground. While you're dodging these crystals, eat up to full health and equip your melee gear with your dragon warhammer. The second phase is exactly the same as the first phase. Everybody specs the melee hand once and gets into their positions. The third phase, the final phase, is a little bit different. Everybody will dump all their specs on the melee hand and keep hitting it with melee. After a while, after the first teleport special, the hand will have this infinity symbol over it. This means you can no longer damage the melee hand. If you try hitting it, the hand will recover some health. So everybody stay on the melee hand until the infinity symbol and then everybody gets in their positions. Mages go left to mage his mage hand Runners start tipping the balance from left to right while hitting his mage hand and meleeers switch to mage gear and also hit the mage hand from the melee side. After a while the infinity symbol will disappear, then the meleeers will start damaging it again. Mages and runners stay on mage hand, only the meleeer hits the melee hand. The part that a lot of people mess up here is that you have to kill both hands at around the same time. If you kill off the mage hand before the melee hand is very low and ready to die, the mage hand will just come back with full HP. Only kill a hand if the other hand is also ready to be killed in the final phase. When you kill both hands at the same time, switch to your range gear and finish off the head. In this phase there will also be intermission crystals falling from the sky. Try to stay on your side so the runner can try to keep doing their job. Side note, usually final phase is the third phase, but once you get up to 8 plus players in one raid, there will be 4 phases. So 3 normal phases and a special last final phase. During the fight, Ulm will also use some special attacks. Let's go over these. Colored spheres. Ulm shoots these green, blue or red balls and deactivates your prayers. Get your prayer up before the ball hits you. Green is range, blue is mage, red is melee. These spheres drain 50% of your HP if you're not praying or 50% of your prayer points. Crystals. Ulm puts a crystal seedling under you that pops out after a short delay. Get off these crystal seedlings before they pop. Lightning. Lightning comes from the walls and goes over the field. Getting hit by the lightning locks you in place for a short time and deactivates your prayers. Teleports. You get matched with another player and have to stand on top of each other to not take damage. Generally, you two meet at the thumb of the melee hand. If you are maging and you get paired with a runner, it's common courtesy to stand under the runner's location. Acid spray. Don't stand in acid. Acid drip. Turn off your runner energy and walk around to not take damage. Try to stick to your side of the map. Firewall. A player gets surrounded by two walls of fire. Use a water spell to make a hole in the wall and set the player free. This is why we bring our rune pouch. You can just do this by clicking on the firewall. Generally the runner does this because he is in the center and has a good view of every player. Burn with me. 
Ulm sets you on fire, dealing damage every couple of ticks. If you stand next to someone while burning, the burning will spread to the other player. Stay one tile away from your teammates to not spread the burn. Falling crystals. Turn off your run energy and walk around to not take damage. Try to stick to your side of the map. Crystal bombs. Ulm will place these bombs on the floor and after a delay they will explode and deal damage in a large radius. Stay far away. In his final phase he has an extra special attack, Life Siphon. He will summon two pools of water on the floor and follows it up with a life stealing attack. If you stand in the pools of water you are safe. If you aren't in the pools the life stealing attack will damage you and heal Olm. After the raid you can find the items you left in your storage box at the box near the bank. To find a team to raid with just enter the We Do Raids Discord, the link will be down below. That was it for my guide. I hope everything was clear. I will be putting chapters on each segment so you can rewatch if you forgot something mid raid. I recommend trying this out with your friends so it doesn't matter if you die a bunch. If you got something out of this video, definitely give it a like to help me out. If you want to learn some other very rewarding piece of content, there will be a link to my corrupted gauntlet guide on screen right now. Thanks for watching and good luck on getting that T bow. See ya!